I like to go for long walks. Walks that cleanse the lungs and cleanse the spirit. This walk, though, has particular meaning for me, and it's a pilgrimage I make every year at this time. I can remember every detail of my wife's appearance, even though she's been gone for nearly ten years. I remember how her cheekbones would rise when she smiled. I remember her long, raven-black hair flowing down her back like a shiny waterfall. I also remember how she looked without hair. She was still beautiful, and she could still smile, but not as often as she used to. The sickness came and went quickly enough, but when it went, it took her with it. I was only 31 years old at the time. She, 33. Our daughter, Emily, had only recently turned six.
It's hard enough for a parent to raise a young child on their own, doubly so when the child is of the opposite gender. Yet that's precisely the predicament I found myself in when Cassandra died. By all means, both sets of grandparents did their best to help out, but my pride dictated that I could only ask so much of them. I needed to prove to everyone, not least of all myself, that I could do this. I had no desire to be the all but absent father that my own had been, and endeavoured to spend as much time as I could caring for my daughter in the most direct way possible. I won't deny that the odd drink came in handy during this early period, but it was yet to become a problem. Much greater challenges in the early days were the ones that people would think almost trivial. Ensuring my daughter was safe when she used public restrooms and that she cleaned herself properly when she was in the bathtub. Responsibilities that would normally fall upon the female parent when there is one. Emily was still very young at the time, of course, but old enough to feel awkward that her father was checking in on her during her more private moments. There's no denying that the presence of a woman would have alleviated much of the burden cast suddenly upon both of our lives.
It's not like I didn't try to meet other women after Cassandra's passing. I even went on the odd date, but, well, between my teaching job and my responsibilities as a single parent, it was hard to not only find the time, but to find someone to babysit for the evening, without calling upon the goodwill of the grandparents yet again. Most of all, though, it was impossible to find someone to fill the yawning void that Cassandra had left in her wake. I never asked you to be alone, my sweet. You'd have had my blessing if you had found someone else. All I would have asked is that she'd be a good mother to Emily. Ah, yes, I remember this evening. My wife left a note for me with a friend of ours who worked at a place called Danny's Cafe. <laughs> she always did like her little games. We had a lot of good times in this district, made a lot of good friends, enjoyed a lot of good meals, but there are unfortunately other memories which I associate with this place. <laughs> 